Hey guys, it's Miss Hagen again. <laughs> Duh, it's me. Um, <laughs> anyways, today what we're gonna be talking about, this is a general video for my environmental science and physical science classes. Uh, we're gonna be talking about how to write a lab report. I know you guys are so excited about learning how to write a lab report. But lab reports are really important uh, for scientists because um, whether you decide to go on to college and uh, study uh, sci any kind of science or maybe um, you go to trade school or what have you, you might have to write a lab report. Now lab reports are important because they are a way that scientists are able to communicate their ideas and things that they have studied and are researching to other scientists. Okay, so uh, scientists normally join um, different groups or associations or societies that have to do with their specific area of um, study. So a chemist might join the American Chemis uh, Chemistry Association or Society, yeah, a ACS, okay? So anyways, what's important about that is that they're able to get together and um, communicate their ideas to each other and regulate things and come up with stuff like that. Now normally they have a convention about once a year, depending on the society, it might be more than that. And scientists are able to get together and present the research and talk to each other and share ideas. But for the rest of the time that they are working on stuff, they're not going to a convention every weekend. So what they do is they uh, publish their reports in what we call journals. And these things are like magazines, but they're published usually quarterly, so once every four months and they have um, what are called peer-reviewed lab reports or articles. And so peer-reviewed is where other scientists read what you have written and then they will ask you questions or say, hey, I think this needs to be explained more or this part was really great, I like how you did this. Basically, they edit it and then the scientist has to rewrite it and send it back in. For you guys, it's really important that we learn how to write in science. A lot of people tend to think that scientists are not good writers and that scientists um, don't really like to write. Okay, now that may be true for a lot of us, but um, writing is a really important part of being a scientist and part of their job. Okay, so it's also really important for you because standardized tests, we're moving towards writing stuff more and you being able to explain your uh, data that's even give, given to you or your ideas, okay? Now, for our lab reports, we have several different sections, and this varies based on your teacher. But for me, what we're going to have is the introduction. I'm just going to write intro. We have procedures and materials. Procedure and materials, okay? We have results. Discussion, conclusion, and work cited. All right, so those are the different sections that should be included in your lab report. Now, I'm going to ask you guys to write a lab report for every lab we do. You might as well just get used to it. And for what I require from you is that you have a folder, and in the folder you have some paper where you can do all of your lab report stuff, okay? And observations, data, all that kind of thing. Now let's talk about what's going to go in each section. So your introduction is really important. This is where you put your background information. So let's say in my physical science class, you guys were writing your first lab report about Charles Law. So in your introduction, you're going to talk about Jacques Charles, the scientist who the law is named after, what Charles Law is, and how it works when it was uh, not discovered but implemented and accepted by scientists. Okay, you're going to want to, I like to say that you want to answer the uh, five W's and H, who, what, when, where, why, and how, to the best of your ability. Okay, some things it's harder to answer those questions for that you're doing your lab report on. Also in your introduction, you need to make sure that you include what are your independent variables and what are your dependent variables. What's your control? You should also make sure that you have your hypothesis. Okay, and your hypothesis needs to be an if-then statement. 
Here's an example of one. So you could say that you um, are doing an experiment where you're looking at boiling point. So you could say, if I add salt to water, the boiling point will decrease. Okay, so this is an if-then statement. If I do this, then this will happen. Okay, um, you also need to make sure you include the purpose of your experiment. So why are you doing this? So for a Charles Law lab, the purpose for y'all's experiment was to show the relationship between temperature and volume. Okay, um, now some experiments like for environmental science with your edible layers lab that was the first one that you guys did, you really didn't have a hypothesis nor did you have um, different variables, okay? It was you being able to pick um, what you think uh, the type of food item would best fit for the um, scenario or for the layers of the earth, okay? So that's what you need in your introduction. Your introduction is probably gonna be one of your longer sections and it's most likely going to be uh, one of your more difficult sections to write because it includes research. Okay, it's important that you cite any sources that you use um, in your introduction. Okay, and you need to cite it using MLA format. That's the type of format we're going to be using. All right, now procedures and materials. Procedures and materials is very, um, this is probably one of the easiest sections. Materials, you just need a materials list. Okay, I don't need sentences, I just want you to list it out so I can go look and see what I need to be able to do this. Okay, procedure needs to be very detailed, okay? You need to make it almost where it's like idiot proof. Anyone could do it, okay? So, just saying, let's use the example of making a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. Just saying, you get the bread, you put the peanut butter on it, put the jelly, put it together. That's not good enough. That's not going to cut it. Okay, you need to say, first you need to go to the cupboard and pull out the peanut butter. Then you need to go to the refrigerator and pull out the jelly. Then you need to go and also get the bread from the cupboard. Take out two pieces of bread. On one piece, spread peanut butter. On the other piece, spread the jelly using a knife. Okay, Do you, I hope you guys are getting the idea. It's a lot more detailed, okay? It's step by step. Anyone could do it. It's almost scripted, okay? Now, um, that's what you need in the procedure and materials. It needs to be very concise as well. In science, we don't use very flowy terms. We don't use um, very uh, super descriptive language when it comes to writing our sentences. So, for example, I would expect you to say, eat the peanut butter and jelly sandwich. That's what I would expect. What I don't want to see is something like, pick up the peanut butter and jelly sandwich and squish, as I picked up the peanut butter and jelly sandwich, I squished it together to get the jelly and the peanut butter to mix better. Then I took a bite, and when I took a bite of the peanut butter and jelly sandwich, I was able to taste all the different flavors in my mouth. It was delicious. Okay, I don't want that. I don't need all that detail. I don't need to know all that. All I need to know is that you ate it. Okay? So be very concise. Um, results. In the results section, this is where you're going to put um, your data, okay, or your observations. This is going to be a section that is very, um, it's probably going to be one of your easier sections. This is where if you have drawn pictures, if you've collected numerical data, you're going to Put it there. And now with numerical data, you need to probably put it in a table or a chart or a graph. You need to present it in ways that your reader is able to understand what you're showing. Okay? It's very important though that you do not explain your results in this section. All you're doing is presenting them. You're saying, look, this is what I got. This is what I found. Okay? Then comes discussion. Now discussion is probably going to be the hardest section and can be the longest section depending on the lab. Okay? In this section, this is where you get to let your opinion shine through. Okay? You get to explain what you think is happening in the lab. Most in these other sections that I've talked about, you're not going to do that with those. That's very fact driven. Okay? But with the discussion, this is where you get to explain what's going on. 
okay? Also in the discussion, you need to put anything, any kind of error that could have occurred or what um, possible sources of error. So maybe you messed something up or you read the thermometer wrong or um, your hot plate wasn't getting hot enough, you know, something along those lines. Um, you also need to put in there anything that you might do to better improve your experiment next time you do it, okay? And you know, most times labs come with questions at the bottom. This is where you would answer those questions. And a lot of times those questions are gonna allow you to be able um, to answer, describe your results or answer any of the problems or something like that in there, okay? So those questions will guide you most of the time in writing your discussion, all right? Then you have your conclusion, and for me, this conclusion is a lot different from like what you might write in your um, English class, okay? Our conclusion should only be about two sentences. And in those two sentences, you need to say whether your hypothesis was supported or not, okay? If you're doing a lab where you don't have a hypothesis, then you could say um, something along the lines of, um, you know, what you enjoyed about it or what was, what could be done better or um, what you may change, okay? Um, and then our works cited, these, this is going to be like a bibliography. Our works cited is going to be um, done in MLA format. I like to use the website, uh, Son of Citation Machine, if you Google that. Um, it will come up and it has all the different types of formats that you cite things in and you're able to just basically plug it, plug in the information, press submit, and it makes your citation, which is awesome. Um, I used it all through college and grad school, so do it. Um, so, another, some other key things about a lab report that you need to know is that it should always be in third person. There are no I's, there are no we's, no you's. This is uh, he, she, it, or they, okay, so you're writing in third person, and you need to make sure that um, you are breaking these sections apart, okay, so it's not just like an English paper where everything flows together. You're going to have one section titled introduction, then like a paragraph or two paragraphs. Then you're going to have another section titled procedure and materials, and you'll have that information there, and so on with everything else. Okay, so it's not just like a paper where you have five paragraphs flowing together. These are broken up in different sections. Now, for me, I am, I am not going to require you to type them. Um, I would prefer for you to type them if uh, your handwriting really is hard to read. If you do type them, please use MLA format. So Times New Roman, 12 point font, one inch margins, double spaced. If you um, are not going to type it, you're going to write it, which is what um, you know, a lot of scientists do now. They, sometimes they write them, type them up. So other times they're going to just handwrite what's going on. Um, then please make sure that you are putting these in order and that you are using um, you know, correct, complete sentences and everything like that. Um, so, that is what I expect from your lab report. There is a rubric that I am going to post in the description below. And I'm also going to uh, put a link in the description to an uh, example of a lab report so you can check it out. That example is going to be a little bit different than how we, uh, I'm asking you to do it, but it's a good representation of what a lab report in high school should look like. Okay, so again, if you guys have any questions, you should have my email address. You can hit me up there or ask me in class. And uh, have fun writing a lab report. Woo! Peace out, Girl Scout.